Hi everyone, my name is Lee Elliott. I am Global Head of Occupy Research at Knight Frank and author of our recent Your Space Research, which surveyed the views of more than almost 400 global corporates about the changing nature of the workplace. Uh, a topic that's particularly pertinent, of course, given the pandemic and its effect on how we work and potentially longer term where we work. I'm joined today by a panel, an international panel to discuss one of the four S's that we use to structure our Your Space research. For those of you, of you that are new to the research, Your Space suggested that the future of the workplace would be characterized by four S's. Real estate, the office of the future would be strategic. It would matter to its occupants, both collectively and individually. Uh, the workplace would be safe and support a rise in well-being, health and safety agenda that the workplace of the future would also be sustainable because it needs to be because of the impending climate crisis and our ability to mitigate against future risk. And finally, that the workplace of the future would be smart, would draw on technology and the data it generates to create a better workplace environment and experience. Today, we're going to talk specifically about the second of those four S's, safety. Uh, there's no doubt that the pandemic has ushered in a new and heightened awareness about the role of health and safety within the workplace. Uh, initial suggestions were that the pandemic, the virus was to be transmitted uh, through surfaces and we saw a lot of intervention within the workplace around prevention, around surface transmission and more latterly there has been growing recognition that the virus is actually airborne and that has led to lots of con consideration around things like air conditioning and its role in mitigating against further disease transmission. So workplace safety and health is going to be critical as occupiers start to reoccupy spaces around the world and will be a considerable concern of staff as they return to the offices, not just in the short term, but over the longer term. What we also saw within your space was that this issue around health and safety was to sort of essentially join an already well established trend, that trend around well-being, workplace well-being, uh, to create a sort of very powerful triumvirate around the workplace environment and experience, which has health, safety and well-being as key considerations. We're pretty familiar, I think, with the role of the workplace in supporting physical well-being, whether that's ergonomic chairs right through to uh, end of trip facilities and shower facilities within the office environment, all supporting our physical well-being. But one of the growing frontiers is the role of the workplace in supporting mental well-being. The emergence of sanctuary spaces, for example, that support people's uh, mental well-being, their ability to disconnect from the uh, ever uh, uh, ever emergent grid that we all seem to work on in a technological technology driven world. So these are some of the issues that we're going to talk about with our panel today. Uh, we're going to explore the issues of safety, health and well-being in the workplace of the future uh, in a, an attempt to help you create a better space for yourselves and for your staff. So let's go to the first question. And what we're going to do is go around the world a little bit and, and get a view of how the workplace has responded to the pandemic and what interventions we have seen and will see over the longer term to ensure that the workplace uh, is supporting that threefold agenda of health, safety and well-being. So I'm going to start with Ek uh, in Thailand. Uh, we'll work our way around. Each each panelist is going to introduce themselves, where they're based, and what they do, and then they're going to go into answering the question. So, Ek, over to you. Hi, thank you very much, Lee. Uh, Kap. My name is Ek Ayutthaya Brunakun. I'm a head of workplace strategy and project service for Night Frank Thailand. I'm based in Bangkok. Yes. So, um, I think a lot of uh, landlords, well providing um, lots of, of uh, hygienic um, uh, or alcohol or, or those kind of things. A lot of process coming, get into. Uh, one thing is about um, screening. When you enter the premises, you've got uh, the, the temperature screening, uh, the lock-in, um, the consent forms, all those kind of things, it's been a, a mandate normal situations for about almost a year right now for us to do it and and 
well, we can't find out that it's quite a hesitate something when it first start, but right now it's become well accept and it's it's feel more comfortable for employees as well. The organization as well right now um, focus on hygienic, on health and safety as well than ever before. I mean, in in the past we we have the risk assessment, right? But normally, like especially in Thailand, it's about um, uh, a, fi uh, a firing place, um, uh, riot, riot <laughs> protest, but not so much of a pandemics. This is one of the situations where organizations rethink about getting all these uh, risk assessment on the pandemic side. And a lot of companies started to have their, their people reboarding, re-entering the space, the workplace as as small as 30 percent as the initial and climbing up to 50 percent. So I think this is this is one of the things that in Thailand are working at now. OK, that's brilliant. So let's uh, let's head stateside with Madeline uh, and, and a view from 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 the US on on these dynamics and particularly around, again, this sort of health and safety preoccupation that's occurring within the office. Madeline, what's your perspective? Hi, Madeline Dunsmore. I lead our workplace strategy and human experience team in the US, as well as our change management practice. Um, I'm based in Washington, DC. Um, I, I think it's so fascinating. I'm actually going to echo a lot of what X said. I know we want different perspectives from across the world, but um, I think we're all kind of experiencing a similar moment. Um, but as it ups and downs, you know, throughout the last 16 months, we've experienced different things where you're saying, I, I'd like to talk about, you know, the the safety officer kind of as a role in the organization. And, and you know, that was the person kind of responsible for the safety. And, you know, they were charged with that. And it was honestly like a forgotten thing that we just put on the book. So, you know, like the lawyers don't get at us like, OK, we got a safety officer. Who cares? Um, but uh, now this is a safety component. You know, you're not just doing fire drills anymore, right? You are now have the ear of the CEO and they're really listening to you when it comes to things like safety and how to prevent, you know, illness, accidents and have a safe workplace. And so I just think the elevation of safety and um, and Lee, as you said, kind of in the intro, the 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 idea of health, safety and then health and wellness, those were like two like different things. Like, and now it's one thing, it's health, safety and wellness, and it's all about people. So in the US, we saw early on a lot of mitigation with um, those plastic shields around, like say your receptionist or security desk. We saw one way signage of, you know, um, you can only circulate the office in this particular pattern. And there's a lot of stickers on the floor about standing six feet apart. There's hand sanitizer everywhere. We're taking temperatures just like Eck talked about. We're doing certification. There's that microbacterial uh, film, I guess, of all over buttons, handrails, high touch surfaces. Everything says they're actively cleaning it more. We're seeing cleaners like everywhere, you know, like rubbing, scrubbing things down. And so, you know, each one of those layers maybe gives us a little bit more feeling of security. Um, and I had a lot of clients who wanted to come back last fall in the States, um, you know, and they did a lot of work and they spent a lot of money and they put a lot of planning into it and they asked their people, please come back, please come back. You know, and maybe there was a 500 person office and maybe 60 people said they were going to come back. And after two weeks of the office being open, you know, 10 people were there. So you put a lot of money and you put a lot of effort and time and hassle to the poor facilities team who was in person doing that, you know, sanitizing everything. And like, was that the best, you know, bang for your buck, as we say? So um, I think there's a lot of that and that continues to come up and down. You know, we have an evolving situation in the U.S. Um, thankfully, our vaccination rates are are on the rise in some areas, but not in all geographies. So, you know, we're it's it's a completely evolving situation and what's safe, you know, um, Lee, you mentioned we were really worried about surface transmission and then the threats really from other people. <laughs> and and how do we protect against that when we're social animals and to do the knowledge work that we do? It's best when we're all together. So, gosh, it's been challenging. We've come up with some workarounds, but I think 
um, hopefully the lights maybe at the end of the tunnel, maybe here in the US. And um, we're looking forward to kind of seeing what happens to these um, safety mitigation elements that we put in place in our space. Great. Well, I mean, I think there's a lot there's a lot to chew on there. And uh, I think the evolving situation for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think there's no doubt that the workplace of the future will only really truly be safe once we get to higher levels of vaccination. And thankfully, that does seem to be uh, a needle that, if forgive the pun, a needle that is shifting uh, within with around the world. So uh, that, that we, we have some hope there. But I'm, I'm interested particularly on that uh, more rudimentary, dare I call it that, uh, sort of health and safety perspective and how lasting that's going to be. I think this is a step change. You know, some of the things that we've kind of forgotten about uh, are likely to be part of our workplace experience for, for, for a long time to come post pandemic. Adam, with that in mind, perhaps a, a good time for you to, to perhaps give your perspective on this. Yeah, certainly. Thank you, Lee. So um, I'm Adam Gilbert. I'm uh, Operations Director for Knight Frank Promise, which is the facilities management business in the UK. And uh, my background is actually health and safety. I've been a health and safety professional for the last 20 years. So the last year, a year 18 months or so, has been an incredibly challenging time, having to work very, very quickly to put in place mass measures across a large number of to suit a range of needs. Uh, and I don't think I can recall experiencing a circumstance where you're having to do so much so far across breadth of, of buildings, building types, and trying to support such a huge number of people. And in the in the early days of some of that, there were some real challenges that we were trying to work through your, your general compliance things in buildings just to keep buildings running, like having your lifts working, your your heating, your air conditioning working, and worrying that you're not going to be able to get your engineers there, you're not going to be able to maintain this equipment was really difficult. Because at that point, you didn't know how long things were going to go on for, and you didn't know when people were going to want to go back to the buildings. And the reality was that people wanted to be in buildings all the way through. And often you've got companies that are running critical services from buildings. So you, we had to maintain buildings as accessible all the time. So we had to look at lots of the things that, that Madeline and Eck have already talked about have been applied here in the, in the UK as well. And we were focusing on things like how do we increase air ventilation rates? And how do we maintain basic reception services when we've got people either having to work from home, having to do that remotely, and different changes in hours of occupiers coming in. So people want to be in at seven in the morning rather than your kind of typical sort of eight or nine thirty rush in the morning um, so that was a big a big change there that we really had to had to battle with quite hard we also managed quite a lot of residential in the UK and we almost had the opposite situation there because those buildings suddenly go from um, having a lower occupancy during the day to actually being fully 24 7 buildings so we're having to balance that increased demand for those buildings basic challenges like getting people's groceries in and out when you're managing um, large multi-storey flats. Do we allow um, deliveries through the buildings? Um, how do you manage simple things like lifts? Um, different between commercial buildings and residential where you, in commercial buildings, you've seen a lot more people choose to take stairs in smaller buildings. In larger buildings, very nervous about more than two or three people in a lift. In a residential building, you're immediately dealing with households, so you can't police in the same way because you can get yourself in a, a little lot of trouble. I think if you if you get that wrong, so so a huge range of of different challenges that and that we're still seeing actually coming through now, even as we've had Freedom Day, as we, we called it earlier earlier this week, it, in buildings that hasn't changed um, too much. We're still having to apply a lot of those measures, uh, and as Madeline said risk assessment um, and I think as well risk assessment was a really key um, document that we needed we've had local authority looking at buildings going into buildings a lot questioning these things and these documents have to have to stand up and they have to reflect what you're doing as well so so that's been a challenge to cope with different types of location where you've got mixture of retail office as well how do you cope with all of those needs so I think uh, the, the word that seems to be common at the moment is challenge. 
uh, very challenging environment. Um, Joanna, with that in mind and with what you've heard, what's your perspective on this particular issue? Uh, you're particularly focused on health and safety, as I mentioned. What, what have you seen from, from office occupiers? Yeah, thanks, Lee. So I'm Joanna Dixon and I'm a workplace consultant with the strategic consulting team here in London. Um, and we help occupiers all over Europe and the Middle East um, align their spaces with their business strategy. So, I mean, it's really interesting following Adam because he has clearly been so much up against it on the ground. Um, I think we're really now working with um, with occupiers to figure out that longer term piece. So what is the broader meaning of a health and a safe and healthy workplace? Um, and whilst there is still this ongoing challenge of meeting the daily risks um, and the practical kind of mitigation that is just necessary there's this new baseline now of, of what you need to do to to ensure that risks um are as, as low as they can possibly be having said that the risks you know changing on a still on a weekly basis um i think there's also a whole new kind of definition uh, around well so it's kind of where does the responsibility lie um and particularly in the uk this is quite pertinent as we've just opened up as Adam mentioned, so uh, it's really been shifted onto businesses. And as I think Madeline has expressed really well, you can have the most compliant workplace, but if employees don't have the confidence that their that their employers are really looking out for the safety in in all aspects, then they're just not going to come in. So it's really been um, it's really been critical to pin down what the workplace is going to be used for. Um, what the priorities are in terms of business um, and then how you can meet those in terms of providing, you know, the best and safest environment um, for, for your people. 